Shaitan hates us. I told you that? Shaitan hates us. So he wants the worst thing for us. The worst thing he can imagine should happen to us, he wants it to happen to us. Now, what was the worst thing that happened to him? You guys call it out. What was the worst thing that happened to him? Hmm? He got kicked out? He got kicked out is the outside of it. What did he feel inside? Humiliated. Shaitan felt humiliated. And humiliation is one of the biggest pains creation that has dignity. If you have, animals don't have dignity. Animals don't have dignity. Human beings have dignity. Apparently shaitan had pride himself too. He had a self of respect for him, sense of respect for himself. And it, he was embarrassed, he was humiliated. He wants to take revenge against humanity. What would be the ultimate revenge against humanity? If somehow he can get human beings to be humiliated. If he can do that, he's accomplished something. Adam is in Jannah. You could argue, how did Iblis get to Jannah? Iblis was just kicked out. But Allah has given him the means to make waswasa, so his waswasa can be heard from far away. His waswasa can be heard from far away. Now it's not that hard for us to understand with the advent of cell phone technology. Right? And this is just worldly means. But Allah Azza wa Jal speaks. And Allah, Allah's word is heard by the angels and the angel delivers it to Rasulullah Wasallam. You know, our salawat, when we send salawat, a hadith mentions our salawat are heard by Rasulullah Wasallam. How? We're not in Medina, we're not in, you know, we're not right by the Prophet Wasallam's grave. How, how is he hearing them? This is, Allah makes, if He wants you to hear something, you'll hear it. Shaitan doesn't have to be inside Jannah to be heard. And shaitan is mamnu'ah from, he gave him access at that time. He not, don't worry, when we go into Jannah, by Allah's mercy, when we go into Jannah, he's no longer got access. This was limited time. This was part of the test. So anyhow, فَوَسْوَسَ لَهُمَ shaitan. Shaitan whispered to them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Was wasa, was wasa, was. You see the two syllables together? In Arabic, when you whisper something, it's called hamasa. When you whisper over and over again and you don't stop, it's called was wasa. And when two people are whispering and you're, by the way, the word whisper has a whis in it too, doesn't it? Was <laughs> wasa, whisper. Why well, have a teacher that does that? But anyway. When you hear two people whispering to each other, what's the two syllables you hear all the time? That's what I do with my kids when I want to tease them. I say, Walid, come here, let me tell you a secret. Imad says, I want to know the secret. No, I can't tell you. <laughs> Shaitan whispered. And linguistically, waswasa also means someone who whispers from behind you. And when you turn around, no one's there. He hides himself. He hides himself. So you start thinking after a while, these are your own thoughts. It's not even shaitan. Shaitan made waswasa put to both of them. Who's both of them? Adam and Hawa salamun alayhima. Okay. Then he says li. The word, this word li has a... It's got a mountain in it. This word li. It tells you everything. Allah says he whispered, shaitan whispered to both of them for the reason why did he whisper to them? What was his agenda? What did he want to do? Now you could say because he wanted them to disobey Allah, because he wanted them out of Jannah, because he wanted them to disbelieve, because he wanted them to go to hellfire. Because, because, because. Allah says, let me tell you what his ultimate agenda was. لِيُبْدِيَ لَهُمَا مَا وُرِيَ عَنْهُمَا مِن سَوْآتِهِمَا So he could expose to each other that which was covered of their private parts. <coughs> Shaitan's ultimate agenda was to get clothes removed from our parents. That's what he wanted. Now you have to think, I was thinking maybe Allah is going to say, Shaitan wanted them to eat from the tree. Right? Because Allah says, don't go near this tree. Shaitan wanted them to eat from the tree. Allah says, no, that's not his real agenda. Somehow Shaitan had knowledge. This is from, this is min al ghaib for us. But Shaitan knew that one of the consequences of disobeying Allah is humiliation. And the humiliation in Jannah will be, the first humiliation is the gift of Jannah. One of the first gifts of Jannah is clothes of Jannah. And if you get disqualified for Jann from Jannah, what are you no longer qualified for? 
The clothes of Jannah, if you disobey Allah, the clothes will be removed and your ugliness will be exposed and your shame will be exposed and that will be the ultimate humiliation for the human being. What better revenge than to make human beings humiliate themselves by disobeying Allah and his ultimate goal is for the clothes to be removed. The story of Adam salam teaches us that shaitan's ultimate agenda is to humiliate us by having humanity remove its clothes. When, when, when dresses get shorter and shorter. When, you know, when images get filthier and filthier. When they say it's no harm showing a little skin. You know? When the, when the filth industry becomes trillions of dollars. Then shaitan sits back and says, I'm accomplishing my goal. I, I, got, to do, I got to do with the children of Adam what I always wanted for them to remove their clothes, to not make a big deal out of clothes. You have to understand, the clothing that Adam and Hawa Salamun alayhima were wearing were clothes of Jannah. So the first clothes are actually a gift from Allah. Allah did not create us with clothes. Allah did not create us with clothes. Allah says, Inni khaliqun basharan. You know what bashar comes from? Bashar comes from bishr. Bishr means skin. Allah created a creature which was just skin. But then Allah clothed that creature. He gave him a gift on his own, of his own, that, that human beings were not created with. So clothing itself was a divine gift. And shaitan wanted those clothes to be removed. Now the word by word, liyubdiya, so he could expose. So he could expose. To both of them, mawuriya, what was covered up and wrapped up and kept a secret. Anhuma min sawatihima. The word sawat just baffles me because Allah could have said min jismayhima, min arba'ihima from their body parts. You know, He could have said from their bodies, from their from min, min badanayhima. He says min sawatihima. Sawa is actually used in Arabic for something ugly, something evil, something ugly and something evil. Human beings being exposed without clothes in public is something ugly and something evil inherently. It is something indecent inherently. Sawa is also used for a corpse. You know in the same surah, Sawata Akhihi. When Habil and Qabil's story happens, you know the story of Habil and Qabil? Qabil killed his brother Habil. And he doesn't know how to bury this, the corpse of his brother. Kaifa yuwari? Sawata Akhihi. Same word again. The corpse of his brother. And a corpse is not something you want to look at. It's something inherently ugly. You know in the fitrah of the human being, in the nature of the human being, it is not tempting to look at nudity. In our nature. But when our nature gets corrupt, Allah created us with a beautiful nature. But when na that nature gets corrupt, then you want to look at nudity. And if, if you have that temptation overwhelming you, that means something has been corrupted in your nature. Something has been removed. Because inherently nudity is called ugliness in the Qur'an. Nudity itself is called ugliness. Sawatihima. That's what it's called. 